Uh, I have to tell you a little story. I met Mary, and Mary's sitting right at the end, and Michael at a conference at the Geneva Center. And um, they walked up to me after a presentation, and they said, um, we'd love to take you out for lunch. And I thought, food. <laughs> food is always a way to reach anybody with ASD. <laughs> So that's how our friendship began. And I went and I toured um, the location in Amherst, New York. And um, I thought, there's no way that they have nailed what I do here in Peel in servicing people with autism. And when I got there, I was blown away by their facility. They truly have an understanding of what um, students with ASD need to be successful in post-secondary education. I was so amazed when I toured their facility and uh, I was really proud because I thought, you know what, somewhere around the world people are getting it. Because sometimes in Ontario I can get really depressed when I see what's happening and uh, when I tour around the world and I see what other places are doing, it really gives me hope and I bring it back to Ontario and I try and implement some of the ideas I've seen um, in other places around the world. And it's nice to meet people of um, like-minded ideas and values because um, then I start to realize I don't really feel so alone, you know, because sometimes in Ontario I get frustrated like I'm banging my head against the wall trying to get help for people and I feel like nobody really understands. And especially this year has been a really turbulent year with labor unrest in the education system. So it's been a very difficult year for students with autism who are in grades K to 12 right now. And so hopefully next year, now that we have some stability with the government, things will definitely get better. Um, I can be reached by email at carolann.mcdonald at plsb.com. I answer all my emails, and if you have any questions or anything, you can always call me or email me. Um, I do hold an education degree, and uh, all of my degrees are from the same university, York University. And the reason for that is, um, once I figured out how to make my way around the university, I didn't want to switch and go to a different school because it was so difficult for me to get from one class to another that I figured once I figured out a map in my mind of where to turn, look at this statue, look at uh, this particular monument, look at this piece of artwork, once I uh, navigated my way around the York campus, I thought, um, I'm going to stay here and do all of my degrees here because one thing we need to be reassuring the autism community about is one degree is not enough. You know, like one degree doesn't make you marketable and people with autism um, need to be doubly qualified than anyone else going for the job because we don't do very well in the interview process and we don't have those connections and we don't have those social skills and we may offend or be rude during the interview, not intentionally. So I find on paper, we have to have double the amount of qualifications as other people going for the same job. And like every boss I've had, usually I have double their qualifications. And I have to listen to them. And I'm sometimes like, OK. But on paper, I'm very, very qualified. But yet I'm finding it really hard to move up and become a vice principal. Uh, they're starting to open doors for me now because I've started complaining. But um, it's very hard to move up or get into positions of power if you have um, a disorder that involves communication. Because communication is key to everything. And when you have a disorder that that's your deficit, it's, it's really disabling. But I try and really focus on my strengths. And um, you know I recognize where my limitations are, but then lead always with my strengths. So. Um, Ms. Lastman, in her presentation, she gave an amazing presentation, talked about how she felt that college was a better place for people with ASD. And I would agree to some extent, but uh, I kind of, um, a little bit opposite in my opinion. People with very, very high functioning ASD, I think belong in the university environment. And just the reason I think this is because, um, you know, a lot of the students I teach cannot tie their shoelaces. But if you ask them about what's happening in the world or what their opinion is on world issues, they have a very well-educated opinion. And it's very factual and uh, very accurate. But then they'll walk down the hallway and, Ms. McDonald, can you tie my shoelaces, please? <laughs> so uh, college to me is very hands-on. And um, 
people with high, high functioning ASD, which is usually Asperger's, um, we're not very good with our fine motor skills. There seems to be a bit of a delay for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. So the university environment is really where that particular group of those people on the spectrum flourish, because you're allowed to think outside the box. You get to class and your professors, you know, a little bit like you, or um, you only go to class sometimes for three or six hours a week. So, you know, that phobia of getting to the class is you're only going to experience that once or twice a week, whereas college is like every day, all day, n number of hours in the classroom setting. Whereas for people with high-functioning ASD, you go, to co you go to university for a few hours, you go to the lecture, and then you come back to your <laughs> solitude and you work on independent work and you read and you research on the computer. And that really works well for a sector of the high-functioning population. And also in university, um, Ms. Lassman was correct, um, there's only a few assignments with a particular university course. Well, that is such a relief to me <laughs> because then I'm stressing out only half the amount of time. So like in a college course, you'll have like six or eight assignments due. And yes, it spreads your mark out over those six or eight assignments, but that's six or eight times that I am uh, literally going to vomit the night before trying to get this assignment done. So if there's only three assignments in a university course, then that's only three times during the year that I'll probably vomit due to the anxiety of trying to get that assignment done on time. And my mother having to listen to the meltdown on the other end of the phone. <laughs> like, Mom, I don't have this done. I'm really worried. And her trying to send me the assignment. I'll proofread it. I'll help you through this. It's going to be OK, Carol Ann. So I think it's less stress on the parents, too, if you take university <laughs> courses than the college, because there's fewer assignments. And uh, also in university, you know, you go to these large class sizes, and it is hard. But as long as you're sitting in the front, you arrive early, all the distractions are behind you, not in front of you. And I think at York, I was particularly lucky that I picked that school. And I don't know why or how I, I came across that school. I think it was my high school was kind of helping me decide. And I, on, uh, I only applied to one university. And uh, people said to me, like, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And I said, no, this is where I'm going, and this is what I want to do. So I got into York University, and I immediately went to the disabilities department. And at that time, they didn't really understand Asperger's. They had me lumped in with the group of um, people that were also schizophrenic. And I, I thought to myself, my mother always told me that I had a different side or that, you know, I had a different personality sometimes, but you're lumping me in with the schizophrenics, and that kind of made me not feel so good at the time, but nothing against schizophrenics because, you know, we can resemble them at times. There's no doubt when meltdown is in, in motion, it does kind of look like schizophrenia. But um, yeah, York has come a long way. And um, you know, sometimes I have to take a minute and pat myself on the back for that, because it was me all along educating them. I need this. I need this to be successful. Can you please help me with this? What do I do now? And um, you know, the Learning Disabilities Department now is one of the best there is in the world, I've heard. They are absolutely fantastic. They do a tremendous amount for the students there. And um, I attended Osgoode Hall Law School. And uh, I didn't get in to Osgoode Hall Law School, but York is very creative in helping students find other doors in. So um, there's no way I can pass the LSAT entrance exam because it's like a four-hour exam that's really a test of an ASD's person's ability to manage their anxiety and not a true test of your level of intelligence or ability to cope in any one of those law courses. So. Um, I went to York and I said, I really want to take some courses there. So when I was doing my master's degree in education, what they did was they said, well, if you go and take some of the law courses as part of your master's degree, we will grant you permission to go to law school. So that was, York is very creative at helping people find other doors in because sometimes people on the spectrum can't always go through the front door. And this is something I really work hard to teach my students is if the front door is not open, it doesn't mean that there's not a side door or a back door in. There's always a way in. There's always, you know, a way to overcome that obstacle and find where you can go or how you can get the education that you want. 
Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about is um, I recently attended an Autism Ontario conference and when I was there, one of the big topics of conversation was parents were finding that when their children were done high school, they would graduate from high school to the couch. And it's like, okay, where does the ASD population go now? Well, this is really a, a shame that in Ontario, people are graduating from high school to the couch. This is, this is, this is not acceptable, and we need to do a lot to change this. And slowly things are changing, and the education community has been working on that. So now what's happening, and it's start, the transition is happening, Students are now graduate, students on the spectrum are now graduating from high school to college and university and now to the couch. So, so like, it, we're coming along here, you know, we're, we're starting to get better here. So now we need to start to work on, okay, we're going from high school to college and university and now we need to avoid that couch altogether and get into the job market. And that's the next transition and leap that we need to make as a community. And we're a powerful community. The autism community is a force to be reckoned with. I'm telling you, in the school boards, they are starting to become very wary of us. And <laughs> the principals and everybody are starting to go, ASD, okay, now we need to act and we need to do something to support this student. Whereas when I was growing up, that didn't happen. So things are changing, and uh, it's because of people like you in the room that things are changing. All of your advocacy work is really helping and really working. And the other thing I would like to talk about is um, something I came up with an idea for CIP. Maybe I should talk to Michael about it, but uh, it's a great business idea. In that I found this um, idea that I bought a house with a few teachers in Brampton and uh, we decided we're going to put three ASD students in that house and we're going to support them to go to post-secondary education. I thought, oh, this should be easy to find three students. Well, all of a sudden I found like 20 students, but they don't have the credits to even get into college or university because the criteria is so different in Ontario than the rest of the North America. It's very specialized. If you don't have this, then you must have French, and you must have math, and you must have this, and you must have this prerequisite and this prerequisite. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Like, you really need to be in the guidance department in grade 10, grade 11, grade 12, in order to meet all these prerequisites. So then this business idea I came up with was, you can actually travel to different places around the world or travel to um, like even a CIP office or something. And if there's a high school teacher there and they're teaching a course, you can get a high school credit. And if it's a high school credit marked U or M, then that's a prerequisite for university or college. And I thought, wow, okay, so right now the problem in education in Ontario is that ASD students are not getting in because they don't have that there's all these gaps in their transcripts, but we could fill those gaps. And how we could fill those gaps is by offering programs for high school credits, where students get to travel, we get to teach them differently. Like they can, grade 12 university biology could be taught on a coral reef somewhere in Costa Rica on a trip. All we need is a certified elementary or a certified uh, high school Ontario teacher to do that and offer a course outline, and we need a name to run it under. So where the gap is right now for a lot of students in high school is that they don't have the courses to get into the college or universities. So what we need to do is fill that gap now by offering it in the private sector, and we need to align ourselves with a company like CIP and offer those courses, and we teach them differently. And we need to hire teachers with autism, and there are quite a few teachers out there with autism, who will be able to teach the course in the way that we learn. And we can learn from the deaf community. The deaf community took control of their education early on, and a lot of deaf teachers taught deaf students. And I think what we need to do in the autism community is we need to take back our education system. We need to have people stop telling us how it's going to be done, and we need, like people like Michael and I, need to start telling you how it's going to be done. And I think once that starts to happen and people start to hear our voice 
and people really start to listen and I can model for people how people with ASD need to be taught and how we learn, then I think we're going to see huge success rates. And then when we can get into positions of power, we can really affect change. But right now, uh, people with ASD, we're not really in positions of power. And a lot of that has to do with um, systemic barriers that are put in place. Like for medical school, for law school, even for um, Schulich School of Business, they all have these huge entrance tests that need to be written and passed and everything in order to get into professional schools. And we don't really do well on that type of standardized testing. Like I've taught students whose uh, psychoeducational reports, when I read them, I thought, oh my gosh, can this student even feed themselves? The scores are so low. And then when I tapped into the student's mind, what I realized is the student is actually brilliant. But the test scores and the marks were not reflective at all of the capabilities of that particular student. And I'm finding that's very common in a lot of OSR files with high-functioning ASD students. Their test scores are not reflective at all. But what's happening is the school system is putting them into these programs based on the test scores. And then, they're, and then their potential is never truly reached. So I would like to also mention that mentoring is a great way for people with ASD to develop. If you could find another ASD individual to mentor your child or another ASD individual, that works really well as, as well. And mentoring um, is a great way, a buddy system is a great way for people to succeed. And I've seen that be very successful in the school system and very successful with young adults as well. So if you have any questions, I will be available. Um, I'll just sit over here beside Mary. Thank you.